Today we're going to be showing you how to remove the DME on a B48 Mini Cooper. The DME is located behind the airbox near the battery jumper terminal. Start by removing the intake inlet hardware. There are two 10mm screws and a locking tab where the inlet meets the airbox. To remove the airbox, loosen the hose clamp around the turbo inlet pipe, and then the MAF connector by gently squeezing and pulling away from the MAF. Then remove the 10mm screw that's between the airbox and the headlight, and pull the airbox up and away from the rubber mounting grommets. Pull off the rubber weather seal and start removing the rain tray in sections. The first part, you will need to remove the one 8mm nut and unlock the four plastic fasteners using a flathead screwdriver. Then remove the three 8mm screws on the top of the battery and DME enclosure. Disconnect the negative battery terminal using a 10mm socket wrench. You will also want to remove this two pin connector so that you can pull the cable away from the battery. Next, remove the windshield wipers. Remove the plastic cap and use a 16mm socket to remove the nut securing them. Use both hands to gently work them back and forth to release them from the spline shaft. Now you can start the next section of the rain tray. There are four plastic flathead fasteners and one 8mm nut securing this section. Once those are free, you can start pulling the tray away from the windshield. Start at one side and gradually work your way across. Take your time with this step and avoid forcing it. Once removed, use a T20 bit to remove this small plastic cover for the two cables leading to the DME. Then remove the two plastic push pins securing the plastic covers around the front strut towers. Now take a T30 on an extension and loosen the three screws holding the shield behind the engine. Take note that these screws will not be fully removed. They will stay attached to the heat shield. Remove the heat shield. Remove the two 15mm screws securing the front of the battery enclosure and remove by pulling up. Remove the positive battery lead using a 10mm socket and pulling the cable away from the enclosure. Now start removing the DME connections. Start at the back and use a pick tool to slide the retaining clip to free the rear connection. The next two connections can be removed by squeezing and pulling up. The three remaining connections are removed by pushing the tab and sliding the locking mechanism over the connector. Once the connections are out of the way, you can remove the DME by pressing the two white tabs and pulling the DME out. Now carefully package your DME, include a copy of your order form, and write the last seven digits of your VIN on the outside of the box. Once you receive your DME, you're ready to reinstall. Place the DME into its mounting location and ensure the tabs lock into place. Reinstall the heat shield and take note of the two channels that need to be lined up properly. Then tighten the three T30 screws. Now start reconnecting the DME. In some cases, the DME wiring loom will be pulled away from the enclosure. Make sure that this is clipped back into place. This time, starting from the front and working your way towards the back, 
Install the first three connections first. Push them into place until the locking mechanism engages, and then slide it over the tab. The next three connections can be installed in any order. The next two connections will just be pressed into place, and the rear connection pressed into place and then locked with the retaining clip. Reinstall the small plastic cover above the heat shield, clip into place, and tighten the T20 screw. Reinstall the positive battery lead, and then tighten the 10mm nut. Make sure the cable is seated into the enclosure. Slide the front of the battery enclosure back into place, making sure the cover lines up with the mounting channel. Then reinstall the two 15mm screws. Now reinstall the two plastic covers around the strut towers with the two plastic push pins. Slide the rain tray back into place, ensuring it clears the two windshield wiper spline shafts. Be sure the drainage pipe lines up with each other, as seen here. Work your way down the tray, pushing it into place at the bottom of the windshield. Secure the plastic fasteners with a flathead, and tighten the 8mm nut. Press the windshield wipers back onto the spline shafts. The longer wiper goes on the driver's side. Then tighten the 16mm nut and press the covers into place. Reinstall the negative battery terminal with a 10mm socket and make sure to reconnect the small 2-pin connector. Place the battery cover back into place and tighten all three 8mm screws. Next, reinstall the last section of the rain tray, again ensuring the drain lines up properly. Secure the four plastic fasteners with a flathead and tighten the one 8mm nut. Reinstall the rubber seal. Next, put the airbox back into place using the two mounting locations on the bottom. Gently press down and then tighten the one 10mm screw between the airbox and the headlight. Reconnect the turbo inlet pipe by tightening the hose clamp and reconnecting the MAF. Put the intake inlet pipe back into place and tighten the two 10mm screws. Once you clip the intake inlet back into the airbox, you're all finished. Thanks for watching.